boop, 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 boop. Animation. Hi there everyone, Animation here, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to reupholster a table. This is the table I'm going to be making in this tutorial, but I also use this method to reupholster this chair. To make this tutorial happen, I'm just using some plain white paint I bought at Walmart, a cleanup brush and a big brush, some plastic to put over my counters, a cute, like, sheepy fabric that I found at Hancock Fabrics, and a table. I'm going to be using this end table that I bought at Walmart. I think I spent maybe $15 on it. Now I'm putting down some plastic because I want the deposit back on my apartment, and I'm going to be unscrewing the legs and setting the tabletop aside for later. Now it's time to paint those legs up! It's going to take two or three coats to build up the opacity that I want, but I'm setting them aside so I don't make the paint all chunky and gross when I try to put on the next layer. And if you spray paint them, you'll avoid this problem entirely. Now, once you've checked them over and you've made sure that there are no too glaring imperfections, just let those dry for about 20 minutes and come back to them. If you've ever wondered how to put a lid back on a paint can, which I can't imagine you've ever wondered that, what you have to do is take a flat, hard object, place it over the paint can lid, and bang it down with a hammer. This keeps you from denting the lid if you were to just use your hammer, and make sure the lid gets completely flat. And make sure to wash your brushes between coats. This is the second coat. I could, in theory, do one more coat to make it perfectly opaque, but then I realized when's the last time anybody's ever, like, looked at my furniture closely, and I decided to be lazy and only did two coats. I am using this fleece that I found at Hancock Fabrics to cover the top of the table. You could also use a material without stretch, I'll show you how to do that as well in this tutorial, but I'm using a material with a good amount of stretch to it, which will be a little bit helpful. I'm using a staple gun to secure the fabric to the wood, I'm just pulling it taut and stapling it where it needs to go. There are two ways to fold over the corners. I don't know how to explain this and it looks better in the video, but the first way to do it is to fold the fabric under itself and to turn it and then staple it down so you just have one little tiny seam. Now, the way that you do this if you have a fabric with any kind of stretch to it is you just pull it taut and staple it down. This will give you a lot more fabric that you're going to have to cut away, but it also gives you a prettier edge to your table. And all you have to do is screw those legs back in after they dry. The way these legs attach actually makes the corners look a lot prettier and keeps the fabric nice and bunched down. I got very lucky and I didn't staple over any of the holes that were originally there, but if you did, just cut them away and pull out a few staples. It's not going to be the end of the world. And the underside of your table is going to be a little bit ugly, but as you can see from the video footage, it's not really going to matter too much because nobody is looking under your short little table. Thank you guys so much for watching, and um, can I can I turn off this lamp? Like, why do YouTubers need everything to be so bright? I don't understand this. Like, I'm just gonna... You, you, you guys know I pay my own power bill, right? Like, I can't afford to have all these lights on, and like... Can we just, like, do YouTube in a dark room next time? Please? <laughs> okay. My poor tripod. It's got a broken leg. It's okay. It's still good though. Poor thing.